Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us. So we know lots of people out there know who Karen is. Imagine some weird person doesn't mm -hmm. know who you are. Mm. How would you define who Karen is? So first of all, thank you, Mark, for the opportunity to be here. I am Karen Elazari. I am a friendly hacker. I am a security researcher from Tel Aviv, Israel, and I've dedicated my life and my work to studying everything that we can from the hackers of the world, both the criminals, the malicious hackers, and the friendly hackers that are actually helping make all of us much safer. So that's my point of view, that in fact we do have hundreds of thousands of friendly hackers out there in the world. That's what I like to call the Internet's immune system, these friendly hackers that are actually helping us find software vulnerabilities and security issues, and they're forcing us to evolve our paradigms of technology and to demand something better. So actually you're saying uh, people perceive hackers are a bad thing. What you're saying is hacker can be massively for good. Uh, yeah, and this reminds me of, I tried to call my position chief hacking officer, mm. but I dramatically failed because that was politically incorrect. But we need more hackers on this planet, yeah? I absolutely think we need more hackers. And for many years, the term hacker was synonymous to cyber criminal, where in fact, the reality is that we have to differentiate and not all hackers are bad. Some criminals, spies, or terrorists might use hacking skills and hacking capabilities and hacking tools within the, their malicious efforts. But that doesn't mean they are the same as the friendly hackers. And in fact, you know what, Mark, some of the very first hackers on planet Earth were the very clever programmers and very smart individuals who started the very first hacker culture, if you will, in the first engineering and computer schools here in the United States, in uh, MIT and Berkeley and Stanford and those kinds of places. So the very first hackers were definitely not criminals. They were very clever individuals. So we recently discovered that data is like the new oil. Mm. So big empires have been built on data. And recently we have discovered that uh, data is a new oil, but it's, it's a somehow soiled oil. Mm. So what's your vision about data for good, data for bad? It's absolutely true that Silicon Valley has been pushing this notion that data is the new oil and that's what's powering the new economy. However, at times it can become a toxic asset. And if you cannot protect it well, and if you have a data breach, it's almost like having an oil spill. And you actually have those same types of impact. You have the reputational impact to your company, you have the ecosystem impact to other organizations and people that are, you know, involved with it, and you actually have impact down the line, 10 or 20 years down the line. So I actually think that as we consider how many companies, how they are collecting vast amounts of data, we really have to change our view on what is actually the crown jewels within that data. What is the really precious you know, quality, the value of that data, and protect that data very, you know, very closely. So looking at that, not just collecting all the data that you can. In fact, recently I've, I've been known for saying, if you can't protect it, don't collect it. Wow. It's a very, you know, it's a very easy slogan. I might be coming out with t-shirts soon, as a lot of people are really, you know, they're being pushed to collect more and more and more data about your clients, about interactions, about, you know, how people are interacting with your product. And it's true that there is value in all that data, but it would be, I believe, more, worth more worthwhile and more positive to consider how do we really just collect the data that we need and how do we protect, protect that data in a worthwhile way so that we can build a safer future on top of that data. So that's a complete paradigm shift. It's like uh, the vision was like the more data I have, yes. the stronger am I, the more competitive advantage and I, I have. And you say, be careful. Collect exactly. less data, be careful with the data. If you can't protect it, don't collect it. If you can't afford to protect it, you probably can't afford to collect such vast amounts of data. And it's not just my point of view. Regulators in Europe are now pushing companies to look a lot closely at how they're collecting data with the GDPR, uh, Data Protection Directive, Directive. And here in, in the United States, the state of California is also pushing out really powerful new regulation that's looking at how companies are collecting data. So this is not just a a thing that's nice to think about. It's also becoming a business directive that's powered by how state regulators will look at the company and the data that they are collecting. What is your biggest concern today? 
One significant concern that I have today as I wake up in the morning and I, you know, look at the hacker community is actually we don't have enough hackers on this planet. There is a vast talent shortage in the cybersecurity industry. Industry reports that look at the workforce, uh, you know, three years ago they said we need a million more security professionals. A more recent report that I just saw this week is talking about 3.5 million unfulfilled jobs in cybersecurity wow. by the year 2020. So this is not a profession or a job that's going away. It's actually a profession that's expanding and it includes a lot of different specialties within it. And there's actually not enough in my point of view, on ramps, uh, programs to bring more people up to date. And not just young people that might choose to study this in their high school or their college, but actually people that are in the second phase or third stage of their careers and they're thinking about doing something different, we actually need to create more pathways into the cybersecurity industry so that we can you know, create that army of good and friendly hackers. The, the nefarious people, the, the criminals, the state-sponsored spies, they certainly don't have a shortage of talent. And in certain cases, in certain countries, they can just recruit that talent, you know, from within their army or w within their population. It's actually the army of friendly hackers that needs all the help it can get. So that is my number one concern when I wake up in the morning and I think about the state of cybersecurity. It's about the talent, not the tech. Good. So if we were to use a Star Wars metaphor, like the dark side and the force. Mm. The force would be the hackers for good. Yes, so the we friendly need, hackers. We need to breed more Jedis to be able to... To create more programs, you know, it's not just about breeding, it's about creating more programs for people to be more knowledgeable and even uh, empowering and teaching and educating developers and software architects and the people that are creating the next generation of technologies, educating them about secure software development and secure architectures. So really propagating the idea of thinking like a hacker and using the hacker mindset to build a safer future and creating more people that can be a part of that ecosystem because that's where I think we will have the most impact. Probably one of the most cutting-edge advanced holistic experts on planet Earth on cybersecurity. I say that. Uh, Thank um, you. That's very <laughs> kind of you. I'm sure there's many people that I learn from every day and I, I've built my research on top of the work of many others. But so thank you for that. You're like our our Yoda in cybersecurity. <laughs> okay. uh, imagine uh, this was a magic wand. So I give you this magic wand. Mm. Uh, you can change anything you can on planet Earth, really anything, mm. but just one thing to make this world uh, safer and better world. What would you change? I'm going to surprise you, Mark. I think my suggestion for a safer future, it starts with two words, abolish passwords. I think we need to get rid of passwords. And if you think about it, passwords that we use every day, a modern individual has to use 40 or 50 different passwords every day. They are a relic of the past. They belong in the 19th century or the third century when they were invented. And in fact, they have no place in the 21st century where we have so many other technology tools that can help us authenticate people and computers and processes in a much safer way. Passwords rely on a very volatile piece of memory, the human memory, and they're very easy to guess, to crack. Most people recycle their passwords. Unfortunately, it's the most popular form of recycling on the planet, probably, as people find a password that works for them and then they use that across different services. And if you look at cyber attacks and a lot of incidents, especially with enterprise organizations, they have all started with a privileged account, some, some account of somebody in the company that gave away their password by clicking on a link or filling up the details, or by simply an account that had passwords and that should have expired but didn't, and the criminals were able to take advantage of that. So many cases could be prevented if we got rid of this antiquated form of authentication. And I think it's uh, scary to people because we're so used to password as a reality. You know, from the very first days of using the internet, we would all have a username and a password. So we think that's just the way it should work. But there's actually time for coming up with a new paradigm for authenticating people, whether it's using devices like a hardware gadget or our phones or other means of authentication using biometric data. There are so many new and better forms of authentication. And I hope more and more organizations decide to get rid of passwords. So that's my, you know, my magic wand moment. That's what I would do. I would get rid of passwords altogether. So really, I expected rocket science, but this is really common sense. So you're saying uh, 
don't collect what you cannot protect. That's right. We need more hackers for good. So this is really about education and empowering not tech, it's talent. Yes. And now you're saying, yeah, let's let's hack passwords, let's kill passwords to avoid these uh, leaks out there. It's definitely an area that's ripe for disruption. Good. So thinking about the future of, of passwords could be one area to disrupt, certainly. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank Pleasure you. to have you. Thank you, Mark.